We want to talk about the right to explanation within the GDPR and its foundations and challenges. So first, I want to give you a short overview about our talk. And first, I will start with the right to explanation within the GDPR. Then I will talk about its purpose, uh, the purpose of the right to explanation and its uh, the conflict with other rights. And then Johannes will talk about an economical perspective on this right to explanation and its challenges and give you a future perspective. So um, there are three parts in the GDPR where you can look for a right to explanation. Um, first of all, you can you have to go in the rights of the data subject subject section and in Article 13 and Article 14. There's the first the notification duty, and then in the Article 15, you have the right of access. So in both of, or in all of the three articles, the wording is, um, at least in those cases, meaningful information about the logic involved shall be provided. So before we start talking about what logic involved could mean, we want to focus here on at least in those cases. So this is referring to the existence of an automated decision-making process. And in the literature right now, the majority says, um, the decisions which are supported by ADM systems are also covered under this norm. And we think this is very interesting because right now, as far as we can uh, understand the situation, the data protection authorities in Europe are handling um, this quite restrained so we think um, as soon as they would become active and change their mind and go with the literature, and this would have a direct legal consequence because then the data protection authorities would also apply these norms to those cases where we have supported decisions by ADM systems. Um, yeah, the second or third norm where you can look for the right to explanation is Article uh, 22. We already talked about it today very short. And um, this article is about automated decision, uh, automated individual decision making. And it says that those decisions based solely on automated processing require suitable measures to safeguard the data subjects rights and freedoms and legitimate interests. And um, yeah, this norm is supplemented by recital 71 sentence four, where it says to obtain an explanation of the decision reached. Um, it's very interesting because this recital is the only part in the, the GDPR where you really can find the word explanation. Um, and this recital also helps us to understand what is really meant by suitable measures within Article 22. So before we go on, I want to show you the differences between Article 13, 14 and 15 and Article 22. And first, I will talk about the notification duty in Article 13 and 14, but the same also applies to the right um, of access. So under Article 13 and 14, it's the controller's duty to inform the data subject with regard to the data processing. This is about a duty to explain the logic involved, and this really refers to a global functioning of the decision process. And it's not a duty to explain the individual decision. And this is totally different, uh, different compared to Article 22, because here we have the prohibition of the solely automated decision making. And one exemption of this um, is uh, or are suitable measures, and such a suitable measure can be the explanation of the individual decision. So France and Hungary, Hungary they specified these suitable measures in a bit more detail. For example, Hungary made um, use of an opening clause and stated that the data controller must, at the request of the data subject, inform the data subject about the methods and criteria of the decision making mechanism and have the result verified by a human being. So after having a look at um, these three norms, uh, we have on the one hand Article 13 to 15, which are more about a global right to explanation. And on the other hand, we have Article 22 in the GDPR, where it points to an individual right to explanation. And as you can see in the huge debate in the literature, it is very unclear whether there is a general global right to explanation. Well, both norms, Article 13, 14, and 15, but also Article 22, indicate that the data controller has to explain something. 
This indication or notion is connecting these two norms. And to find out what the intention of the European legislator was, we want to have a look at the purpose of such a right to explanation and then see what's the aim behind this right. So I will start with the purpose of the right to explanation. At the moment, there's no full-fledged right to explanation for the data subject. But before we start to talk about and asking for more rights of the data subject or duties for the data controller, we want to talk about the purpose of such a right and its limitations due to the conflict with other rights. And so the conception of the right to explanation really depends on its purposes. First of all, um, one is the protection of self-determined decisions, which require the data subjects sufficient understanding and knowledge because an explanation can lead to more transparency and therefore less possibilities of intransparent uh, decisions. Um, but second, the explanation also can lead to greater social and media awareness of the algorithm's social influence and its functioning. And that is because um, a transparent intermediary can really reduce information asymmetry. So when we have the data subject and the data controller, and there's a more transparent information. Um, yeah, this asymmetry can be reduced and there's a better balance between those two. And um, yeah, and on a broad scale, um, a right to explanation really fosters a level playing field. And before we go on to talk about the conflicts of the right, um, we want to have a look at the normative scope or what could it be? So as we already said, um, there's no full-fledged right to explanation right now. There are different possibilities what it could mean. So first of all, we could have a direct right to explanation of the individual decision for the data subject. Second, we could also say that we need new competences for the supervisory authorities. And third um, would be a way that we say we need more clear and concise obligation for the developers to comply with privacy by design principles. All of the three possibilities um, need new legislation or at least new jurisdiction from the European Court of Justice. Yeah, but, but as we already mentioned, um, a right to explanation always is conflicting with other rights. So the GDPR itself does not include any written exemption for an information duty on the logic involved. But um, yeah, we always have to look at the legal term and it must be constructed based on its purpose. And the purpose, well, we already talked about it, but it's always a result of the compromise of conflicting rights. So the scope of logic involved can only be determined by assessing the scope of the conflicting rights. And yeah, we wanna especially have a look on software patents, copyright law and trade secrets. And as you can already see trade secrets, um, I think, or we both think is the biggest conflict on the most important, not most important, but where we really wanna focus on. But I will start with the software patents. So um, patents protect the way of functioning and could therefore counter and write to explanation. Um, and the protection of an algorithm under patent law, well, at least in Europe, it's quite unclear right now. But nevertheless, um, every patent always requires the disclosure of the functioning to be granted. That's because the aim of the patent law is a further developing of the technique. So therefore, disclosure should enable a specialist to understand and rebuild the technique. And the disclosure does not necessarily help the data subject itself since he or she usually does not have a technical background and they need more information than a specialist would need. So patent law might go hand in hand with the right to explanation, but this really depends on the purpose of the right to explanation. So the right to explanation might go further and require even more information or another kind of information because we need a explanation that's really more detailed than just the information that is disclosed um, at the patent office. So, but all in all, we can say that there is no conflict with patent law and the right to explanation. 
And then the second um, yeah, area we want to focus on is the copyright law. So in Europe, we have the computer program directive and the code in its specific design is protected under copyright law. The, the disclosure of the code is protected, but not the explanation or the technique behind this code. So there's no protection of the ideas or principles which underlie a computer program. And since um, we think that, the, or I think it can be said that the explanation does not equal the disclosure of the code, there's no protection under copyright law. So copyright law does not help the data controller to prevent the disclosure of an explanation. Yeah, and last but not least, we want to talk about um, trade secrets. Um, trade secrets are regulated in the Trade Secrets Directive in the EU. And a trade secret is a secret in the sense that it is not generally known among or readable accessible to persons within the circles that normally deal with that kind of information in question. So this definition is very wide and an algorithm or also the algorithm infra infrastructure can be a trade secret. And the consequences of this trade secret protection are very, very strong. So trade secret owners can prevent really any unpermitted access to this. And there are only a few single exemptions um, which are regulated in Article 5 of the directive. And we actually think it's only worth to talk about two of them. So literature A is talking about freedom of information, which refers to journalism. And yeah, as soon as it's not about media, um, this literature is not really, yeah, you cannot um, talk, or it does not really help you. And the second one is literature A D. And it says that for the purpose of protecting a legitimate interest recognized by the European Union or national law. And um, yeah, but now the question is what is this legitimate interest? And the scope remains very unclear. So for example, the German legislator has really not probably implemented this exemption by, well, they just um, said that this legitimate interest must 